and thank you for tuning into this episode. My name is Chris Aaron, and I am the owner and chief business consultant for With Purpose. You know, I've often been asked over the past few years uh, about just about an introduction to With Purpose. And so I thought I'd take the time here um, and share this via podcast as well as uh, record it for video purposes. So you can see this on our YouTube channel as well. But let me, let me get into this just briefly. And um, I grew up in a home that allowed me to listen and watch my parents not only run a business, but just be involved with different people. Um, what they did uh, was really just instrumental in my own life. Uh, there were some challenges because leadership is is challenging when you're dealing with people, but so is, so is running a portion of the business that they were doing. And so as I was growing up as a kid, I, I had the opportunity, the, the privilege to to watch this, but also to listen and to to really measure up with what was being said versus what was being done. And a lot of the time, most of the time, um, they were uh, equal. And so um, one of the things that I really truly learned about leadership was I, I'm, I love baseball. I like the enjoyment of sitting outside and, and uh, enjoying a good game, but I'm also a Dodger fan. Uh, I grew up as a Dodger fan in the middle of Cubs fan. I'm the only person in our family who is that way. Um, but in this, I learned a lot about leadership from the World Series Game 1 back in 1988 when I was a teenager. And uh, it was just a recap. It was bottom of the ninth, two outs, and someone that had been on the designated list, um, the disabled list, uh, was brought up off the bench to um, ultimately win the game. And during this time, I thought the game was over. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, uh, you know, someone's on base. Our team is down by one, and I thought the game was over. And I so I uh, decided to get up and start to leave the room. And my dad was the one that sat me down and and challenged me. He he challenged me about you know is this your team? And I said, well yeah. And he says, well then why are you leaving them? Uh, the game is not over. There's still there's still time available. And so I literally sat down and learned about commitment, if you will, as well as a discipline to follow things through. And it was in that moment, not only did I watch history being made with the Dodgers in World Series Game 1, but I kind of like intentionality with leadership uh, development being historic in my life as well. And, and so there's been a lot of other things, but that was pretty symbolic for me. Um, so as I think about over my lifetime of what I have done as an adult, over the past 30 years, I have spent serving people. Um, I've been in positions that have just been basically in of service to one another, whether they're my coworkers, whether they're a team, whether they're people outside of the business. So for example, um, I, I served in the U.S. Navy. Um, I've done life and health insurance for a brokerage firm. So serving the clients through that, making sure that they had what it was that they needed. I've also served as a pastor slash executive director for the Salvation Army. All of these big, huge opportunities and privileges, as well as responsibilities, were afforded to me. Um, had to work for it, yes. Um, but at the same time, it was about serving people. It was never about self-fulfillment, if you will. But it was always about meeting people's needs, meeting them where they were at, and then helping to come up with a plan on where they wanted to be. And I had the privilege of helping them do so. And so that's just a little bit of an intro about me. Um, and uh, as I get into this about why I created with purpose, I really have it, it. There probably is other elements leading up until this point, and I, I would agree that there are. But what was pivotal for me was back in 2014, I was finishing up my master's degree in organizational leadership, which is like an MBA, but on steroids. There's elements of psychology and counseling that go along with this. And as I was writing the case study for the final project, I chose to uh, write it on a, a company that I was working with at the time, and um, a lot of a lot of concerns. Um, and as I was a part of this as an employee, um, there were some things not only from my own my own history, um, but my education, and started to create a little bit of a plan, if you will, just to kind of test the waters. And I presented it through my chain of command, if you will, uh, to the executive director. She absolutely loved um, everything that I was bringing to her. And, and it talked about, um, we, we had an employee issue. We had a revolving door of employees. And so the part of the plan was to help um, remove that. And so that we had people that were on board for a longer period of time. 
It was about um, getting the right people um, through what we were doing to be uh, a good customer, a good client, or a great customer, a great client. And so there was a lot of this stuff that I was writing up. She loved it. She would take it to the business owner, and the owner didn't want anything to do with it, which kind of was a little <laughs> disheartening for me, but I kept going through it. So I was writing this case study on, on this particular um, company that I was working with, changed the names, of course. And um, it was the professor in this last class that I was doing that with that actually picked up the phone and called me. I said, hey, listen, Chris, this is Professor so-and-so. I just want to tell you that what you're doing, um, I appreciate what you're doing and the, the work, the line of work that you're in. However, you're in the wrong industry. I was like, I'm a little taken back. And I said, what do you mean? He says, listen, you need to be a business consultant. You, you need to be helping uh, create change from an outside perspective, an outside viewpoint, outside the circumstances instead of being internal. And I was thinking about that because here people wanted the change, but the person that could make the change didn't want it to happen. And so I started to think pretty long and hard about that. And it, to me, it was a no brainer, even though I'm not a risk taker. And so um, I put in my 30 days notice and I created in, in the beginning of, well, basically the beginning of the year 2015 uh, with purpose. Now, this professor called me also to express my passion for serving others, for developing people. He called me about my experience and then told me about how I could take my education and merge that with my expertise and not be just a business coach, but be a business consultant. And there is a big difference between the two. Now, before I get into that moment, for me, being a business consultant through my company with purpose, there is no plan B. This is my calling. This, I am a business owner. I'm not an entrepreneur. I am a business owner. And in that, I feel for me personally, for me, I want to give by focusing on this one thing, 100% of who I am to anyone I speak with, whether it's a, um, whether it's just someone I'm, I'm uh, becoming a business in a business relationship with, whether there be a prospective client, whether they're a client whether they're just other business people in the community or across this great country of ours, I want and I will continue to give people 100%. So this is it. This There's nothing else for me. Um, and so in that, I want to be of more service to more people. I want to help more business owners. And ultimately, I want to help people's communities, whether it's my own or other people that I'm helping, because I believe that the community um, banks off of how well uh, business owners are doing, and if we can't see uh, the forest for the trees, then we have a we have a, a concern, we have a challenge, and so what I've um, said that I was going to do, I've made it my life mission now, is I'm bringing solutions. So let me get into this. So, what is with purpose? Well, with purpose is a business consulting firm where you do business and leadership development. As I get into this, let me start off with a definition of what purpose. Is. Let me just read this for us. Purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. It's one's intention or objective. I want you to think about that for me. It's a reason for which something is done or created for which something exists. It's one's intention or objective. So when we are business owners, we're also leaders in a community. We're also we're, we're husbands and wives and moms and dads and, and sons and daughters and, and children, right? And, and we're also friends of different people. So our purpose in life is to ultimately figure out what we're supposed to do and then be really, really good at it. Um, and in this, we're intentional with what we're going to do. So everything comes out of and points back to the reason we're doing it. So for me, being a consultant, everything comes out of my past 30 years of experience, the education, the expertise, da 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 da. But it's also pointing back to giving back to a community so that the community is stronger, so that the business is stronger. This is my life's ambition at this moment. So, with that being said, this is this company, this business consulting company is with purpose. We also do the leadership development. Now, I'll break it down into a moment with the leadership development. But first of all, consulting, I ask questions. I don't tell people what to do in their business. I might 
give advice. I will give advice. I will give wisdom and or direction when it's agreed upon. At the same time, you know your business better than I do. And so um, I cannot be an expert in everything. However, I can be an expert and I am an expert in building business, growing businesses, and that includes growing people. And so with this, it's a tad bit different than coaching. Consulting is really about us. A consultant is a subject matter expert that's coming in and there's a lot more to it, but that's in of itself, that's the essence of consulting versus coaching. Um, this has been my only career, if you will. While I've done it in various things, everything that I think about now going backwards, everything that I have done for the past 30 years has been about being instrumental to developing people and their business. So I hope this makes sense. This is not a second career for me or a third career. Um, I don't just have a certificate. I have the education that backs it up as well as um, the solutions that are providing opportunities and privileges for business owners to remain in business or employees to remain in business or a community to continue receiving a product or a service from that business. So leadership development, it starts with people, folks. Leadership development starts with people. Jim Collins is known uh, in his book, Good to Great, talks about one thing. He says this, you've got to get the right people on the right bus sitting in the right seat. Now, with that, it's about getting your team correct, but there also has to be a value in where we're investing or and or empowering the people that we are serving alongside of. That makes sense? So if, if that's it, then it has to be the developing of them of these people. And to be honest with you, as a business grows, the business owner should not have his or her hands in every single thing. They should know what's going on, but they should also have empowered people around them to run that particular aspect of the business and then um, share that information with the business owner um, as things are as things are progressing, as the day goes on, as the week goes on, whatever the case might be. So leadership development is also about taking someone from here and tapping into the untapped potential so that they are, they're performing at their peak level. It's a process, right? And so with purpose, we focus on three pillars that I believe is absolutely essential to any type of business, whether it's for profit, nonprofit, you any industry, it does not matter. Three pillars. The first one, people. People matter. You have to value people over dollars and cents. We need both. But if you don't have the people in your business to help grow your business, you're not going to have a business to grow. If you don't have people in the form of vendors, that you can have a trusted relationship with, then you're not going to be able to do anything. If in people you don't have customer base, then you don't have anything to, to, to share as far as a business goes. It's just a, it's a glorified hobby if you don't have customers. So we really need to value people. We need to be respectful of who they are, what they bring to the table, uh, their background, their expertise, their personalities, and so much more. And that's what I have the privilege of helping people tap into is who is this person why are they on my team? And a lot of times, um, and I've, I've seen it, even, and I've heard it just even recently, I've had, so, I've had X amount of people on my team for so long that I know them and I forget about what they can do. This was a, just a conversation last Thursday with a business owner that's been in business for almost 50 years. I forgot what my people do. So Number one pillar is all about people. This is what we focus on. The number two pillar that we focus on, processes. Um, if they're not strategic in nature, if they're not effective, if they're not efficient, if you haven't taken a look under the, uh, under the hood of your business, if you will, about the processes that are keeping your business running, let's say within the past few months, then it probably would be good time for a tune-up, if you will. Because if people are trying to run their business today as if it was a year ago, well, we all know that things have changed. I've worked with business owners who are trying to operate their business today as if it was five years ago or 20 years ago. They were failing. They were failing miserably. The people were trying to uh, caution, just like I shared with you about my, uh, my company that I was working for with the paper that I wrote. If we're not in the habit of at least identifying where we can 
tweak things, where we can change things, where we can make it more effective, efficient with whatever it might be, then our processes are, are out of tune. They're out of whack. And so first pillar, people. The second one, processes. And then the third one that we do here at, uh, with Purpose focuses on profits. And it's not just dollars and cents. It really boils down to your ROI, your return on investment. You're investing a lot of dollars, a lot of energy, a lot of time into your business and through that business into your community, into people's lives. So what is your return on that investment? What are you looking forward to getting? So for example, let me um, just share quickly with you a, a brief story about someone that I had helped where they were talking about all these big dollars and cents for their gross profit. So when I asked them what their profit margin was, and A, they didn't know, and B, when we start looking at numbers, and we recognize that their profit margin is maybe only 10%. Um, and they were like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was that low. Okay, well, we need to go back to processes to find out ways that we can tweak so that we can start to grow the profit margin, right? I've worked with people that have worked seven days a week in their business. There's many, many different reasons, and I can't get into that right now. But there are many reasons why people work seven days a week and they get in this hamster wheel, if you will, um, and they don't feel like they can ever get out. So their R, their definition of R, their return on investment is shared with me. How can you help me get back so I can be at home uh, three out of the seven days in the evening? So I'm only working four days a week in my business or five days a week. Great, 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 great. Let's take a look at the people to make sure that the people surrounding you are going to be able to handle this. Let's make sure that your processes are taken care of, that they're effective and efficient so that you can walk away from the office. Now, let me say this to you. When we talk about people, this is the leadership development I briefly mentioned earlier. It's about tapping into untapped potential. If we are not investing in our people, if we're not giving them the value that they deserve, the time that they deserve, the the, um, the the kudos, the accolades, if you will. If we're if we're disciplining in public, not in private, these are challenges that are going to be met with resistance. People want to feel valued in today's world. Um, we recognize this in in various different things that are taking place right now. So it's really really important to make sure that we are recognizing people that have that potential that we have yet to tap into, and then create something that helps develop them as either A, a current leader, or B, a future leader. Now, do we do that? Absolutely. Um, we don't offer cookie cutter programs. What I do, my approach is, is, is listening to you as the business owner, listening to you as the employee, finding out what the community is looking for to see if you're able to provide that, find out what the employees are looking for, seeing if you're able to do that, and then together in partnership, kind of a co-op, if you will, we are creating those processes, those strategic plans, those strategic processes that are going to be effective and efficient to help you meet your goals years down the road. What we can do today does, does affect what you will be able to do tomorrow. Um, and so with this, um, we're looking at directing people to their objectives or their goals by I said, like I said, focusing on those three pillars, people, processes, and profits. Here's the other thing about what we do. We're a solutions-based company. We're solutions-based. We bring value. We bring solutions. We also bring results um, for any type of business across this great country of ours, for all types of companies, whether they're nonprofit, for-profit. Let me just give you a couple quick situations here. Uh, one, we had a company um, a few years ago that had been in business for 20 years plus. They were running their business today as if it was 20 years ago on the verge of bankruptcy. We were able to get in there and help them by focusing on A, the owner, B, some of the C-suite level people, third, into the rest of the employees over the course of, let's say, three or four months time. We got everybody not just reading from the same page in the same book, but reading from the same sentence in the same paragraph. Then we were able to focus together, because we had everybody, focus on processes. In less than a year's time, I was helping them write a letter overseas to a U.S. embassy overseas because they had been awarded a multi-million dollar contract. That's amazing. Uh, the work that I did for ExxonMobil when we're working with them in, in leadership development, 
It's about meeting the people right where they're at. It's not programs. It's not cookie cutter, whatever solutions. It's about meeting where they're at and then really just developing a relationship of trust, of, um, of vulnerability, of transparency, but also of scaling. So it's not just the individual like myself or yourself that's listening to this about scaling yourself, about tapping into untapped potential. It's about what then can you realize you can do for the company and or whomever else that you get to be a part of. So when we talk about this, it's this is why I do what I do. I get so excited. Um, I don't wake up in the mornings with an alarm clock. I wake up going, okay, who do I get to serve today? Who do I get to serve today? This is, like I said, my calling. This is my plan A. This is something that I've been doing for 30 plus years. I just now have the ability to do this through my own business and leadership development consulting company. I am really excited about uh, what's going to be taking place this year, this month, this week, today. I believe that for you as well. You as the listener, I believe that there is something that you have not tapped into yet that once you do, it's going to change your world. may not happen overnight, um, but it certainly is a process. But I believe that every person um, has the ability, has the opportunity, has the influence around them to really shape, mold not only their life, people first, but their business, which then affects the community. So in closing, I'll just say this. Um, I've used consulting um, to do over the past 30 years for many, many different things. Uh, coaching aspects of that, yes, but also consulting um, by developing people, developing businesses. And what's really important is this, is I've used it myself. I've used um, a couple of consultants. Uh, why? It's not because I don't know what needs to happen. It is though that I've used consultants that um, their strength is my weakness. So I've used them to help me um, grow around, if you will, in the sense of being kind of all together um, because there's so many different aspects of running a business. So in doing that, I've used consulting services. I believe in it. I know it works. Uh, just like a player would have different types of coaching on a team, that's what the consultant can do for you. I would ask that you, uh, if you've enjoyed this, this podcast, that you share this with somebody who would benefit from it. Um, I believe that there is somebody out there right now, not just listening, but someone you know, that if you should share this with them, it would encourage them, it would uh, educate them, it would empower them. And that is how I leave every conversation when I'm working with somebody. I want them to be encouraged. I want them to be educated. And then I want them to be empowered. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening. Tune in the next time. Um, and as I always say, live with purpose.